Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Superman Lois, episode 4. Today we're going to be reviewing and breaking it down, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. So thank you for your support on my recent Superman Lois videos, they've been doing very well, so keep on coming back week to week when we make our reviews, and we'll be breaking down lots of stuff. Also, we might be going over a few theories to do with crossovers very soon. Okay, so let's go ahead and break down this episode. So episode 4 was pretty good. Like, I really enjoyed it. I think the show has just been consistent throughout. So let me know what do you think about this episode down below. Anyway, let's first off start with this. So it opens with a flashback. Six years ago, in another place with mines. Well, I presume it's another place with mines. Anyway, so he finds some sort of kryptonite substance. Well, whether it's kryptonite or not, I guess that's just kind of inferred. Well, it's some sort of alien device or alien organism, and it's red, and we're like, what the hell is this? Well, we don't get the proper explanation, but it kind of links to what happens at the end of the episode, because we get this big reveal as to why Morgan Edge has been wanting the mines so bad and why he came to Smallville in the first place. Obviously, he has a lot of things going on, and he's trying to recruit a bunch of people, but that's all kind of with a double meaning. And so at the start of the episode, he says, says, now the resurrection begins. And you're like, what is he referencing? Well, we get an answer to that at the end of the episode. So let's jump right to the end right now and talk about this. So they are in the mines. So that being Leslie La, who was introduced last episode, she is the Kryptonian who killed the guy last episode. So it's her and Edge and they're in the mines that they've just recently acquired. And that was the whole thing in this episode where they had the town hall meeting to give Morgan Edge access to all of this. And it turns out there is something very, very valuable for him and his plans down in the mines. And so Lesla breaks through the wall using her super strength, obviously, as a Kryptonian. I would presume she's a Kryptonian or, you know, maybe like a Daxmite or something. However, Daxmites don't have heat vision. So I'm going to say she's a Kryptonian from another part of the multiverse. And maybe it's because of Crisis. I mean, that's what they did to explain Lex. So, yeah. Also, it must be mentioned that Lex wasn't in this episode again, so he hasn't been in a couple of episodes. He was only in the first two, and so I presume he's going to come back because there is a reference to him at the end with what General Lane does. Okay, so the mines are filled with, I think he said X kryptonite so basically the kryptonite that we saw there wasn't green, and so I think what he means by saying X is basically it's defunct, like it's not working and it's been there for so long that it's ineffective. However, it does have some sort of big purpose for him and his plans as he talks about resurrecting an army and he talks about why he is so good at recruiting and why the recruiting is very crucial for him. So it seems like Edge's main plan is to use this kryptonite to somehow resurrect and maybe take control of an army. Well, I'm not 100% sure how this kryptonite got here in the first place because kryptonite doesn't inherently grow on Earth. It's a substance that came from Krypton. So maybe it crash landed when Clark crash landed in Smallville and somehow it's grown. So that's obviously a theory that we can take into account. However, this is dead. Like, I guess it's been here for 20 plus years, which does track with when Clark came for the first time. So maybe he did bring some kryptonite with him. So I don't know what their explanation is going to be, but I guess we'll find out sometime in the next few episodes. But yeah, so he's going to be resurrecting an army. So does that mean he's going to be resurrecting dead people? Well, it seems like maybe they are killing people off and that's why they're recruiting them. And then they are resurrecting them and they can be puppets for Morgan Edge. So that's my current theory right now. What do you guys think about that? Let me know down in the comments below. And so we go back to the start of the episode. You got Morgan Edge and you got Leza La and they show up at the football game. They're talking to Lana's husband, Kyle. And obviously he has a kind of crucial part to do with letting him into Smallville. That being Morgan Edge, of course, because he's advocating for him. And so at that same football game, and this whole scene is pretty good. Like, it's very entertaining. I do like the way they actually do the American football scenes, especially when they're on the field. I'm not the biggest fan of when they're in the changing room and it's all this kind of big football talk where I'm kind of, as a foreigner, I'm like, I really don't understand this and I don't like this mentality of like, oh, you're really strong, blah, 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 like you're the best, so everyone should respect you. I guess that's just not a thing that we do over here in England, or I'm not sure how it is around the world, but I just kind of don't like the idea of this football mentality that they have. But I do like when they're playing football because it's shot really well 
and I really like the music they use and it's very entertaining to watch them play. So I think it's great and basically you have this big football game, General Lane shows up and that's kind of a surprise as well at the start of the episode. And so you have him sitting down with Lois and so they both talk about the camp boys and he basically finds out about John exposing and using his powers. And so he wasn't made aware of this and so he's like, I'm gonna stick around for a few days. And so he also goes on when they're back away from the football game. He talks about how the military is scared seeing that Superman is not around as much and people aren't seeing Superman flying around in the sky. So people are inherently more scared of prisoners like Kilgrave who plays a part in this episode. And so he's in a prison transfer and Superman refuses to actually escort the transfer. And it all plays into him actually being absent and having all of these different responsibilities. And he basically can't live up to the full potential of everything he's trying to do. So as a husband, as a father, and as Superman, as a superhero. Let's go back to Jordan because he's like the top guy in this episode. Obviously I talked about like how he has been so successful since he joined in with the football team and so basically you have them becoming the champions and Jonathan is very very jealous and this does get resolved later in the episode when Jonathan talks to Sarah and then Jordan and him have a talk so it's not a big deal, but it was kind of a decent part of their storyline, that being the two kids. Over in the other part of Smallville, you have Lana and Maxwell Lord. They talk about giving her a job, and so basically he's trying to play up to her to try and recruit her. And this later bites Kyle in the back because Kyle didn't even notice. He was completely oblivious to Lana feeling uncomfortable and the way that he was actually talking to her it was very intimidating and it just wasn't good. And so. I really like that Lana called that out because I'm still like, what the hell is going on with Kyle? Because, I mean, he just, yeah, he doesn't seem like the worst person in the world, but he is completely oblivious to some major, major stuff, especially to do with his wife. And so, I don't know what kind of problems he has. Obviously, he has his own problems, but anyway, he's really, really playing up the Morgan Edge battle in this episode once again. Okay, so you have Lois, and she faces off against Lesla La. Basically, this is kind of a lead up to what happens in the mines because Lesla shows up at the Smallville Gazette and she basically warns, do not publish this or our lawyers are going to come for you. And so basically, it seems like they've been snooping around or more likely than not, Lesla has been using her x-ray vision to see into what she was writing by, you know, standing a thousand miles away or just outside the building. I don't know, but they're definitely spying on her. Okay, so you got Tag Harris. This is... A major part in this episode because he is freaking out because he gets powers his hands are shaking all episode and basically you have the kids trying to comfort him especially Jonathan and you have Jordan basically freaking out being like is this my fault was it me that gave him powers and so it later comes back in the episode where he fully freaks out and he goes full-on Twilight like he's sprinting around like no one else and he is basically like a loose cannon. So another interesting thing in this episode was that Jonathan said that his dad, Superman, runs at Mach 10. So now that is very interesting because that's very fast and I don't remember the specific number that Barry Allen, the Flash, has been able to run. However, I know he's broken like Mach 3 before and using the Tachyon device he's able to basically break the whole barrier and that's how he went to Supergirl's Earth for the first time. So Barry is able to go really fast, but I think Mark 10 is much faster than Barry's normal speed. So I just thought that was interesting that they specifically said a number. I guess they just came up with a random number in the head and they were like, oh, probably like this is right. However, I do think Mach 10 is definitely pushing it because I remember a couple of seasons ago on The Flash, Barry was struggling to reach Mach 3. So what do you guys think about that? Do you think that inclusion is a real thing? Do you think he's actually going to become faster than The Flash? Well, I don't think he is. Okay, so you have Kyle being oblivious, you have Lana calling him out, and then later in the episode, they have a confrontation, which leads to a weird scene when in the Cushing household, one morning she wakes up and she's like really grateful for him, even though he's done nothing good for her at all. So again, I'm kind of questioning the logic there. I don't know why she is like that in the morning. Yes, I know Lois and her had a really nice talk or something. However, what Kyle has been doing is bad. Like he's not a good husband at all. So I don't know. That's just my personal opinion. And so I'm still a bit questioning why did that scene happen? 
Okay, so you have Lois confronting Morgan Edge, it's a great scene, and it really showed the ferocity in Lois, and I really, really felt it, and I was like, go on, Lois, you can't help but do that in your head, because she's standing up against this megalomaniac, who is essentially her villain, and will probably become Superman's villain at some point very soon, and so she calls Leslie La a creep show, and I thought that was just really funny, because we know that she's like a Kryptonian, she has all these powers, and Lois is just here dishing diss tracks. So good on Lois, because yeah, she had a really good part to play in this episode. Okay, so you have Kilgrave, we go back to Metropolis, he's in a convoy, he makes some sort of hybrid, and he talks about what specifically it is, it's not really that important, basically, it's just a way for him to escape, because he's made this kind of chemical compound that somehow explodes and looks like chewing gum. So I thought that was funny and I mean it was a bit strange but at the same time he escapes into gang attacks, Superman gets notified of this but he gets there too late and this is a whole big thing to emphasize the message that they were going through that Clark basically is in three places at once and he can't fully do one thing. Okay so you have Kyle, he talks all of this propaganda stuff once again about Morgan Edge at the town hall meeting and so you have Smallville's Town Hall, you have all the people there, they are all voting to let Morgan Edge into the mine, granting him access, and Superman was supposed to show up, and he didn't say anything because he wasn't there, he was in Metropolis trying to take down Kilgrave. So once again, that is an example of how he's in all of these different places at once. His priorities are different, and they're not 100% in one thing, and so Lois has a big problem with this, and I thought it was really good that she called it out because they were better for it, by the end of the episode because Clark realized I gotta do this like I gotta focus on not being split between all these places like I need to focus on one thing then go to the next then go to the next and be a good father husband and a superhero so I thought that was really well done in this episode and I really like that message and so you have Lana and Lois they go out and they kind of have this girls night out and it's good fun and I really like that scene Okay, so you go back and you have the Tag Harris stuff, and so Superman is at the same time facing off against Kilgrave. Over in Metropolis, Kilgrave is this kind of weird villain who is a bit somber, and he's not that intimidating, although he's obviously very smart. So you have that going on with his sonic blast that disrupts Superman, and it like kind of makes his ears glow yellow. It looked pretty cool and it was a good fight scene, but the actual fight wasn't the focus of the scene, it was because what was happening at the same time over in Smallville, and that's the stuff with Tag, Jonathan and Jordan. And so Jordan and Jonathan are trying to control Tag, but Tag goes on a mad one because his powers are freaking out, he is going crazy with them, and so Basically, Jordan gets knocked back as he tries to stop him because he thinks he has superpowers and then he gets knocked back and then you have Jonathan trying to do something and just about as Tang is gonna hit him, Superman swoops in to save the day. And so this leads to the revelation from General Lane that the government have a metahuman school for all of these metahumans, so that's a curious thing that they brought up because that means there are a lot more metahumans, say in Smallville and Metropolis, rather than just in Central City. And who do they have locked up there? And it seems very inhumane, and I definitely think we're going to explore that at some point. And we're going to go back to the ways of the military and how they think they're in control, and they can take down all these metahumans who aren't even bad, and they call it a school where it seems like it's more of a containment facility. And so once again, this scene is to emphasize that Superman is obviously distracted, by both sides of what he's supposed to be doing at the same time. So then Superman's like, why didn't you call me straight away? I would have come straight away, which leads into some trouble with General Lane, Lois's dad. And Lois completely goes off, also Clark does for a bit, against General Lane. And once again, she is straight roasting and you really can't help but root for Lois and be like, yes, this is awesome. Like, tell him what's what. He was a terrible dad. Now, you don't want a parent like him, so don't listen to him, and so I thought it was a really great moment of rebellion against her father. Okay, so you have Clark being all cute, he does up the barn, and then it's full of candles, and it's very romantic. However, at that point, Lois's phone rings, and I guess it was kind of a nice touch, because Lane basically calls Lois's phone, and Superman answers, and it's just a way to say they can talk about it together and they will both be the ones to decide where he goes. So they've definitely found a nice balance between Clark and Lois and their kind of feud 
or mini feud in this episode. So this leads on just after this to a scene with General Lane and this is the second to last scene in the episode. We obviously talked about the ending with the old kryptonite and how basically Lezalar is in control of all this land and they're going to be resurrecting people by hiring them and probably killing them. But just before then, we see Lane actually holding the hell thing that he saw but obviously backwards it says 7734 and so Lane calls in a favor from one of his military guys and so they're basically opening a case file called 7734 just in case Superman turns bad. Now this is an interesting turn of events because they're definitely leading up to the idea of Lane betraying Superman and saying that he's a threat and basically the government are going to go after him because he is not falling into line with what they're saying. So I thought that was an interesting turn of events. It definitely aligns him more with Lex because I think Lex's ideas are kind of seeping into his mind, you know, about the evil version of Superman and what happens if he turns bad. So that's about it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really did enjoy this new episode of Superman Lois. Hopefully you guys did remember, leave a like and a comment if you enjoy the video. Also remember to go check out my Flash review that I uploaded last night. Just after this, a couple of hours later, we're going to be uploading a trailer breakdown for The Flash Season 7, Episode 4. So for now, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see room.